Praise the Lord. I want to discuss the pitfalls of the five-fold ministry gifts. The pitfall of people, ministers, involved in the five-fold ministry graces. Those who are called into leadership position, ministers of the gospel, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, as well as music ministers, prayer ministers, ministry of health or church support staff. The playing field is the same. The standard is the same for everybody. So this is indeed for the specific fivefold ministry gifts, as well as other Christians or any man or woman that God uses or who are called into special assignment in the gospel ministry. Remember, these gifts are people as well. These gifts are actually fallible people. As long as you have five fingers, you're going to make mistake, and God knows it. You know it. The devil knows it. But God doesn't want it to be costly mistakes. In other words, flesh and blood can make mistakes and they are bequeathed with human frailties, idiosyncrasies, and even excesses. All preachers, which are servants of God, men and women of God, regardless of status, niche or gender, must be careful of Satan's base, which include fame, finance, food, filthy lucre, and female what I call glory, gold, gifts, God or greed, and girl. Before I go to specific pitfalls or blunders of the fivefold ministry, let's look at the general thing that bequeath us as human, as flesh and blood. And I call it the five things that have brought many men or women of God down. Number one is food. Food can bring you down, not just eating too much or not fasting or not living a fasted life, but eating junk and eating the wrong food. Remember, Adam fell in the garden not because he ate the forbidden food, but also because he ate the wrong food that God did not ask him to eat and then he disobeyed God. With that comes the curse and the fall. So food is a biggie in different ways. Food can bring people down. The first Adam failed because of food, forbidden food. The second Adam, our Lord Jesus Christ, excelled and succeeded through fasting and prayer. Another thing that brings people down in general is pride or popularity, taking God's glory ask satan and he has not changed he's the father of the proud and the lost here the proud of pharaoh and that filthy lucre is money of course you have to ask judas who is even named among the apostles the first apostle with a portfolio and job description who is even from the same place the same lineage the same tribe as our lord jesus christ and he blew it because of money or greed. The next thing, the fourth, is high test or what I call fitty lucre. Ask Gehazi. He was cursed by his master because he took some gift, some lucre or fitty lucre or, you know, uh, unsanctified gift. So not only greed, but things God gave you instruction not to mess with, not to touch, no matter how good, avoid it. And finally, women, ask Samson. Samson was anointed, Samson was God appointed, but he couldn't control his appetite and sexual lust. So, which is what I call the Achilles heel of most men of God and also Achilles ill of most women of God 
are also men, the opposite sex. The reverse is also true. Now, before we go to the pitfalls, let's also look at things that have lifted men of God up. Self-control, as Joseph, prayer and fasting, acts our Lord Jesus Christ, obedience, acts Abel, and of course, humility and service, acts Elisha. Finally, patience, is a virtue, acts Peter, God will bless you as a listen. Now, let's go to the five pitfalls, which are specific to the giftings or graces of the fivefold ministry, which are personalities or people who are called by Jesus and gifted with these gifts to the body of Christ. Number one, of course, we start with the apostle, the umbrella gift. Number one problem of the apostle as a visionary is that they can get ahead of themselves and get ahead of God in programs, projects, people, or personalities, building things instead of building people. They employ unorthodox fundraising techniques to build elephant projects that God did not even institute or God did not instruct. Or even lying and say God said when God has not said, including Holy Ghost auction or ordaining and releasing people in position that God did not call them, including trying to succeed yourself or raise up leaders and put them in position of authority that God has not ordained or release gifts and ministries just because of your building project or branches or churches or parachurch organization or ministry position that are created by you and your cronies or your family members. Training, positioning and ordaining and releasing those God did not call in sensitive positions. Trying to keep the ministry in the family by grooming family members and ensuring family succession. Another problem is that of the apostles, or rather prophets is next. And let's go to the pitfall of the prophet, which is a very pivotal ministry, like you already know. And one of their pitfalls, which you will always hear me say again and again, is that of fiti lucre, what we call merchandising the gifts. Gehazi did that. And when you merchandise the gift, a lot of things go wrong. And he was cursed for that. So here I said, prophets, the prophet Achilles' heel is filthy lucre or trying to merchandise the gift of God, so called commercial prophets. Don't prophesy because of gifts or money. Prophesy God's will alone as since oracle or mouthpiece and don't go beyond God. Gehazi was cursed by Elijah because of these. Another thing, or blunder of the prophet, is don't try to validate your ministry or try to get yourself uh, uh, approved or appraised or be accepted by men or fall into a clique. Try, don't try to prove anything to anybody. So, therefore, I said here, don't try or endeavor to validate your ministry or prove as a prophet or called of God. Never seek people's approval. Let God and your fruit validate you. The Lord said, by your fruits, by their fruits, we shall know them. Don't allow human beings who are fickle to try to approve you or get the approval of men. It will not work. In fact, popularity with people is an enmity with God. Don't try and make people love you or force yourself in people by trying to please them. If you have something to prove, you have something to lose. Those who are complete, they don't need to compete. So don't try. Remember the young prophet. <clears throat> the young prophet died because of seeking acceptance and approval by an older prophet. Number three is the office 
of the New Testament style evangelist. Here, child of God, this office is played with exaggeration of attendance numbers, conversions, miracles, healing, signs, and wonders. I could remember Billy Graham uh, giving his testimony when he was starting off as a young evangelist. So he went to another preacher to ask him about how to keep head count, how to count uh, people who came for the crusade attendance, taking attendance record. And the old preacher encouraged him to lie, encouraged him to exaggerate numbers that nobody cares, that it doesn't matter. And Billy Graham left him run away. And because of that, Billy Graham ensured integrity by appointing his own people who will make sure to count the people that came to the crusade accurately without exaggerating, without lying, without blowing up the numbers or making a, you know, uh, popularity claims because of attendance and uh, Billy Graham shunned that and ran away and gave it as a testimony and things to avoid so avoid evangelists most of them are flashy and we know about televangelists and their scandal and it's too numerous to mention and most of us we sweep it under the rug but don't exaggerate during the healing revival there was a lot of exaggeration about who has the biggest tent. Jack Coe will say, oh, my tent is bigger than Aura Robots. Then A.A. Allen say, mine is bigger. I uh, bought the highest tent. And it, it was like childish. They were doing it because that time there were up to 120 healing evangelists because there was explosion of healing revival from 1948 to 68. So that time there was so much claims and counterclaims and lying uh, by this televangelist and the explosion of the media uh, ministry at the time. So don't do that. Billy Graham warned against that also. So another thing the evangelist does is boasting in the name of testimonies or press report. The flashy or lavish lifestyle of many televangelists have come under this repute and media scrutiny. So don't try and, you know, showcase everything God has done or your testimony. You have to be careful. People boast in the name of testimony. When God is blessing you, be careful about your ego, a braggadocious attitude, and public uh, pronouncement and announcement. And don't be mighty and boastful. Be humble and hungry, and you never go wrong. Number four is the office of the pastor. The pastoral office is bequeathed with taking advantage of the dumb sheep to serve self-interest. One of the problems of the pastor is not feeding the sheep with greener pastures. The Bible says, I will give you pastors, shepherds, after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding as well as wisdom for living. So most pastors don't do that some for the most part this is the achilles heel the second problem with pastors is sharing the sheep uh, i will give you an example sharing the sheep is you know you cut the wool you try to cut the wool so that thing is not scissors we call it a sharer you cut the wool to make clothes or to sell it so sharing the sheep without cutting into the skin so that the sheep will not bleed. It's a fancy way of saying, don't raise so much offering or money, exploit the sheep, take advantage of the sheep, uh, also make the sheep, or use their ignorance against them to extort, to manipulate, to cajole, to profiteer with the sheep. Don't do that. Protect the sheep. Especially those who have church home and who are under a pastor, uh, we encourage that. So I say here, child of God, that they share the sheep so much that the sheep starts to bleed. And the unproductive, unprotected sheep will be eaten by wolves, snakes, lions, bears, and jackals. Also protect the sheep from howling 
from sh other shipling or, 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 or rather other hireling who are not true shepherd especially the people you bring to your church to preach to the sheep they can take advantage of them and finally the office of the teacher the teacher's greatest problem is pride the bible says knowledge perfect up but grace is defied according to apostle paul he said let us not be all teachers that those who are teachers will be judged with greater strictness don't forget that teacher is not a list position he just listed him in terms of importance or roles different roles don't forget that jesus christ himself is also a teacher he's rabbi rabboni or jewish teacher so teacher is not a little or lesser gift per se it's unique in his positioning and most often he goes with the office of the pastor and uh, uh, pride and braggadocious attitudes is the teacher's greatest problem apostle paul also warned us to put in check by the messenger of satan because he has so much or abundance of revelation when you have too much revelation god institutes check institutes checks and balances to keep you hungry and humble teachers sometimes bore you another problem of the teaching ministry or the uh, blunder of the fivefold ministry gift of the teacher they bore you with over information theories research findings facts figures and unnecessary statistics apostle paul says knowledge perfect of grace edified so if you're a teacher you gotta be humble and hungry and be a learner continuously because it takes humility to learn and when you keep on learning you keep on being humble because the more you learn the more you discover you don't know and the more humble you are the greatest teachers are students and great students are perpetual learners and anytime you stop learning you stop growing and pride will take over and Satan will make a mess of your life and your destiny so teaching is very powerful it's very good it's a pivotal uh, ministry and Jesus Christ is the ultimate teacher and be careful with these pitfalls God bless you Dr. Ozot bye bye